I am so glad that you're here, and I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great day, and today we're going to talk about a question that I get all the time in my offices, and I've been getting this. I get it a lot, but I've been getting a lot more in the past decade or so. I've been in practice for about 32 years, so I've been getting it more in the past decade, and not just from old people, but now I'm getting it from young people, and the question is, how do I boost my testosterone naturally? Big question. Because when we first think of testosterone, we first think of it as the romance hormone. I'll try to keep this show clean because I know kids listen to it. So I'll try to use a lot of euphemism. So, you know, fill in the blanks when I use a euphemism, okay? And people say, you know, it's the romance hormone, especially for men. And we got to up out testosterone, up out testosterone. Not necessarily. When you're messing with hormones, we're messing with like micrograms sometimes of, of hormones. Very small amounts have major effects on the body. And you don't want to boost it too high because that can be dangerous. I remember a while ago, uh, somebody wanted to do a test on me and then see if uh, I needed uh, to take this testosterone replacement. It's a drug they were giving. And I, so I went, I said, okay, you can test me. And they tested me and they said, well, you're on the low end of normal. You're in normal range, but you're on the low end. And so you probably want to get that level up. And so I looked at the numbers they had. So I went and researched it. And what they were doing is they were using someone who was in their mid-30s that would be the normal level for someone in the mid-30s. So I went back and I said, listen, I'm not in my mid-30s. Thank you for the compliment. I know I look young, but I appreciate that. But I'm not in my mid-30s. And I said, well, that's just the standard that we use. But that's not a fair standard because different, at different ages, we have different levels of everything, blood pressure. And so that was a concern of mine. And I thought, well, that's kind of a little sneaky what they're doing there. So let's talk about hormone. It's not the testosterone. It's not just for romance. It's for a lot of other things. Now, testosterone plays a lot of role in men, and not, and not just men, but also women. It helps, your, of course, your romance. It helps with maintain muscle mass, bone density, red blood cells, and also gives you a good sense of well-being and energy. So as your testosterone levels drop, and there's a lot of reasons why it's dropping, we're going to talk about that things that you need to do to stop that. So right around age 30, our levels start to decline for men and women and continue to do so as time goes on. And unless you're proactively addressing your lifestyle, it's going to drop. And years ago, I'd have patients come in. It was usually older men on blood pressure medication. And they'd say, well, doc, I'm having a little problem, you know, in, in that department there. Okay. And now I'm seeing it in 20-year-olds. 22-year-olds, 25-year-olds coming in and saying, Dr. Joe, I'm having problems in that area. What do you think it is? And I remember I had one guy come in. He, he looked like He-Man. He was probably six foot three, square jaw. I mean, just a pretty, pretty man. The girls in the office were just going nuts how pretty this guy was. And he said, Doc, I'm having trouble. And so what was happening was he may have these big muscles, but his testosterone levels and his function wasn't there. And one of the reasons I see this with a lot of men and women is pinched nerves in the low back. The nerves in the low back control everything from the waist down, back pain, leg pain, hip pain, knee pain. But those nerves also control the colon, sex organs, and bladder. So with this particular guy, he was using a lot of body sprays and a lot of colognes, and they have in them called uh, hormone-disrupting chemicals, which can essentially lower your testosterone level. He also had a bad low back injury, and that was the nerve to the colon, sex organs, and bladder. So once we got his lifestyle straightened out, got him on some foods, which we're going to talk about that you can do to help increase your production of testosterone, not increase the testosterone from the outside source, increase it from the inside source. And once we got everything working, he was working again, fixed his low back, got his hormones working again uh, through good chemistry, and he was pretty happy. But what will happen is you can decrease your romance, uh, romance function, of course, problems urinating can be a testosterone issue, depression, difficulty in concentrating, memory, weight gain, breast enlargement. This is a whole new, this is for men, a whole new uh, uh, cottage industry that's come up in plastic surgery, and it's called gynecomastia. Gyno, gynecologist means women, and comastia is, is, is breast tissue. And so they're developing women's breast tissue in men. And you might see this. If you, if you start noticing, notice men. And even guys that are in good shape, it's not just that pec muscle that's forming anymore. It's actually starting to look like little breast buds or small breasts. And that comes from exposure to too much estrogen, which then counteracts your testosterone. So a couple of things you need to do. We've got a lot to cover, too. So make sure you t tell your friends about this. This is a real good show today. Lifestyle changes. You've got to cut out your sugar and your fructose. 
and you got to increase your healthy fats, avocados, coconut oil, olive oil. I'm going to give you a little hint, and I'll probably give it to you again later on. When you buy olive oil, take it home, put it in the refrigerator. The next day, it should be cloudy and thick. If it doesn't get cloudy, it's cheap, repl- it's cheap mixed olive oil with other oils, maybe not even olive oil at all. And if that happens, I want you to take the olive oil that you bought, bring it back to the store, bring the manager over, and say, listen, this isn't real olive oil. Because real olive oil is going to get thick when you put it in the refrigerator overnight and cloudy too. So olive oil is something good. Increasing your high-intensity exercise. We're finding now that if you run marathons, that may not be a good thing. In fact, it might be a bad thing. Your body's designed to sprint and then relax and sprint and then relax. So whatever exercise you're doing, I want you to do it really hard and fast for about 30 seconds. Then give it about a minute break. Then do it again for 30 seconds. Do a minute, and a half, minute, minute and a half break. And that's called high-intensity interval training. And so you can get your workout done a lot faster because it's only going to take, if you're doing eight cycles of that, you know, 30 seconds on, minute and a half off, we're looking maybe 16, 18 minutes as opposed to running a marathon because your body's designed for that hard rush and then a break, stress and then a break. And that's how the body works best. And that also shows to increase your testosterone level. So that's kind of a neat thing too. Optimize your vitamin D levels. We can talk about that when we come back. I'm also going to talk about some supplements that you can take that can help increase your testosterone levels. And I shouldn't say increase, normalize your testosterone levels. I'm also going to open up the phone lines. If you have a healthcare question on anything, on anything 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoeesposito.com, D-R-J-O-E-E-S-P-O-S-I-T-O. Or just Google Dr. Joe, the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Hey, do me a favor. Tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. A lot to talk about. We'll be right back. We have a lot to talk about. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Appreciate you being here. We're talking today about testosterone. And that's a question I get an awful lot from men and women, and they want to know how they can boost their testosterone levels. And when it comes to hormones, I don't like to use the words boost. I like to talk about normalize. Because if you go too high, that can be a big problem too. You got to be careful with that. So one of the things you want to do is make sure you're getting the proper nutrition in the body. We're going to talk about the neurological effects. I'm going to take some callers. We've got a bunch of callers at 844-44-DR-JOE. You can be one of them if you have a question. 844 Dr. Joe, not just about this, but about anything in health. And you want to optimize your vitamin D levels because vitamin D isn't really a vitamin, it's a hormone. And vitamin D, the best thing, best way to get it is be expose a good part of your body to the sun about 20 minutes a day. So people think, well, Dr. Joe, I don't have time to lay in the sun 20 minutes a day. I understand that. But if you're driving, if you have a sunroof or a moonroof, I guess, moonroof's open, I think I got that right. Moonroof's open and sunroofs don't. Is that what it is? Ahmad, you're the expert. I, yeah, I don't, re- I don't know. I don't know anything. That confuses me too. I don't know. This, <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Anyway, if you have something on, on your roof that opens, open it and get about 20 minutes of sunlight every day. Get it on your arms. You roll up your sleeves if you have long sleeves. Get it on your face because 20 minutes of sunlight is going to give you about 20,000 international units of vitamin D. And that's what you need. Now, in the winter months, you want to, I take a vitamin D supplement and vitamin D, I take about 5,000 international units a day. And that's the minimum that I know. I'm about 190, 200 pounds to keep your body functioning normally. So that's going to help your testosterone levels along with your immune system and overall health. But one of the keys we have to do is we got to reduce our stress. Because what happens is you have a, a, a organs in your body called the adrenal glands. I'm probably going to cover this a little later again because there's a lot to cover on the adrenals. So for men, we make testosterone with our testicles and our adrenals, women the adrenals. And we want to get the adrenal glands functioning normally. And most people burn out their adrenal glands. Some signs that you have adrenal burnout, bags under the eyes, fatigue. Um, You stand up and you get dizzy. Those are all signs of adrenal insufficiency. So the adrenal glands produce something called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone becomes DHEA. And DHEA, if you're functioning normally, becomes testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, estradiol, becomes the sex hormones. If you're under stress, that same amount of DHEA becomes mostly cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone. Now, at our office, we do saliva tests on our patients to test the cortisol levels. And it's interesting because I've done these tests, and you can see when people are stressed out, cortisol levels high. When they're not, it's not. So if you want to get it tested, we can do it at our office, and we can measure your cortisol levels to actually objectively determine how stressed you really are and then what you need to do to fix that, which is really the most important thing. Doing a test and not, not knowing what to do with the results, there's no sense in doing the test. 
people, I tell it all the time. I said, listen, if a doctor wants to do a test on you, what's going to happen if it comes back positive? What's going to happen if it comes back negative? And if it's the same thing, well, then why have the test? It doesn't really matter, does it? But you want to keep your stress levels down. And so there's three types of stress. There's physical, chemical, and emotional stress. And that ties beautifully with our first caller. Jackson, how can we make your day better? Hey, doctor. Just uh, Thanks for taking my call. I uh, just got a quick question about what you guys are talking about today with testosterone and uh, as it relates to anxiety and social anxiety. Sure. Huge. Um, so yeah. a little backstory of what, what I'm asking is because throughout my entire life, I've had social anxiety and panic attack disorder. But then I came to college and then I had a, a breakup with my girlfriend. And somehow it inspired me to start working out literally every day, hardcore, just as hard as I could. Sure. And eating cleaner than anyone or ever around me ever would. <laughs> Wonderful. It really just changed my life. Okay. And you, and and you so, found the anxiety got better. It, it literally went away, like instantaneously. Isn't literally, that cool? It was amazing. I became a different person. People were like, wow, you are a different person. Uh-huh. But, the, but for, fast forward a year later, you know, certain, certain circumstances happen where you're not able to get the same diet you had, get the same routine you had. Sure. And you kind of fall back into an even deeper hole. What's yeah. the best way to kind of get back into it? Because at this point, I'm at a point where it, it makes me anxious to even want to go to the gym. Right. Yeah. Um, and I just heard that cortisol, uh, that testing you guys were just talking about, and I'm just kind of interested in this to see what exact levels of my, um, like, serotonin and dopamine need to be, like, you know, yeah. readjusted or sure. kind of toyed with just to get back to my, my regular balance to where I was. Sure. A couple of things. Working out and a good diet. A couple yeah. of things with, with when it comes to neurotransmitters in the brain, the chemicals that make us who we are, is you want to, it's linked directly to your digestive system. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, those are signs you're not digesting your food properly. And if you're not breaking your proteins into something called amino acids, the amino acids become the neurotransmitters in the brain. Like tryptophan becomes right. serotonin, tyrosine becomes dopamine, GABA become, um, glutamine becomes GABA. So in order to produce yeah. the neurotransmitters, you've got to give the body the raw materials. And so every right. case I've ever seen, 32 years of practice plus my education, so 35 years I've been seeing patients, every case, and there's been countless that have anxiety, depression, bipolar, suicidal, social anxiety, there's always an undiagnosed or untreated digestive component, 100% of the time. Okay. So you got to fix the digestion, wow. and when you do that, then you get the adrenals working. We check the nerves in the mid-back. Those are the nerves that control the adrenals, make sure they're not being pinched. Get you on adrenal supplements. I take something called withenia, which I was going to talk about later in the show, but we'll talk about it now. Uh, withenia really helps the adrenals. And uh, Eleuthero helps the adrenals. Those are two that I take every day. And when you get all that balanced out, now the body has the chemical capabilities of working, just like you experienced when you changed your diet okay. and started working out. Okay, and one more thing. Sure. Uh, you did touch on, um, on supplements. What are your views on uh, like L-tyrosine and 5-HTP? 5-HTP becomes serotonin. But right. if you don't have okay. – you got to get the, 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 the amino acids – you're going downstream. 5-HTP is in the middle of the stream. And I don't like okay. taking something in the middle of the stream. I like going through the whole process. So if you fix the digestive system, you start getting tryptophan. Tryptophan becomes, become, combines with vitamin B6 and creates 5-HTP, which becomes serotonin. So taking something okay. midstream is not something I, I, I don't usually recommend that unless it's a, a different type of case. But I like to get the body working normally as opposed to giving it an outside source. Okay. Make sense? Awesome. Cool. It does make sense. Thank you. Well, thanks for listening, Jackson. I appreciate it. And folks, if you have a question, hope it didn't get too comp did get too complicated there, Ahmad. A little little too technical. Um no, no. I think you get your point across. Okay, good. All right. Sometimes I we have I, smart listeners, so they're that, able to that, follow along. Well, that's true. I, we we are <laughs> in the top or echelon a higher echelon of listeners. You make a good point there. So and folks, if you have a health care question, you can give us a call, eight four 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 Doctor Joe, D R J O E. Uh, another supplement I like to recommend is something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Now, if you're new to the show, I talk about this a lot. I have them sitting here at the studio. It's two powders, and I mix them together, and it gives you the minimum amount of nutrients for your body to work every day. So like we were saying, if you want to make neurotransmitters, you have to have the right cocktail, the right chemicals to produce the neurotransmitters. Most people don't get nearly the proper nutrients they need for their body to function at optimum levels. So I recommend that supplement to just about everyone. It's two powders. I mix it with, I use coconut milk today. Why? Coconut milk was on sale this week. Put it in a jar, shake it up, and I drink that at least once a day. Now, if I'm going to do a radio show, go on a date, go for a hike, do a big lecture, I'll usually take a second dose. But this stuff is just amazing. It tastes great. And boy, I tell you, once you start taking it, 
a lot of people have trouble when they don't have it. They'll call me up and say, listen, I ran out. Do you have it at your offices? Yeah, we do. Can you ship it to me if they're out, you know, out of our listening area? Yes, we can. And we ship it all over the world. Uh, really good stuff and relatively inexpensive for what you're getting. So you can get uh, Super Greens and Essential Source. Those are on my website, drjoesposito.com. Uh, they're also available on Amazon. My books, other supplements, we have an Amazon uh, page there too. So you can go to Amazon or drjoesposito.com. If you have a question, you could send it me through. Uh, well, now you can send it through uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook slash Dr. Joe Esposito, in case you don't want to go on the air. And I got to go to a break. So, folks, listen, we're going to talk a lot more about testosterone. We're going to talk about the supplements you need to take and certain foods and chemicals that you're exposing yourself to very innocently that are actually adversely affecting your hormones. Really important stuff. So make sure uh, you tell your friends about the show. The number at the station, 844-44-DR-JOE. That, by the way, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening. Glad you could make it. And we're talking today about testosterone. And people get all worried. Oh, I got to raise my testosterone. Well, too much of a good thing can be bad too. So why, my goal is to teach you why your testosterone levels are dropping and what you need to do to not, not raise it, but to normalize it. Now, hormone replacement therapy, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author. This radio show and my other shows are syndicated all over the country and heard all over the world. And so I can't tell you to take drugs or not take drugs. And any doctor shouldn't do that, especially a, a radio doctor, a TV doctor shouldn't recommend taking or not taking drugs. But I do want you to understand that hormone replace, replacement therapy is a tricky business because a lot of complexities on how different hormones work together. It's kind of like medications. We'll test the medication. We say, yes, this is safe at this dosage. And then we'll taste another test another one and say, this one's safe at this dosage. But we usually don't test them together. Because really, there's an, almost an infinite amount of uh, combinations you can have with all the drugs in the world. And so that's many times where people have problems. You may be taking one drug and saying, okay, this is good. And then you mix it with another one. Then you have a reaction. Then you add a third one, and you start to see where it messes up. And hormones are even more tricky than, let's say, uh, analgesics or painkillers uh, because you're really messing with the cellular function. The mode of, administra uh, of how you take it, the administration, the timing, the dose, there's so many variables. The size of the person, are they taking it with food, without food? What kind of foods are they taking it with? A lot of things come into play. So you really want to work with your doctor who's well-versed uh, in, in hormone replacement therapy. It's not something you want to mess around with. But my goal is not to say take it or not take it. My goal is to get you healthy so hopefully that you won't need it. And that's the difference. What we do in our offices is people come in and say, well, Dr. Joe, I have low back pain and I just want to get rid of the pain. And I tell them, listen, I'm not here to treat your pain. I'm here to find out why you have the pain and treat the cause of the pain. Anybody ever have sciatic pain shooting down your leg? I had it for years. And you think, okay, I'm having pain in my leg. Well, what do we do? We don't treat the leg. We treat the spine, the nerve root, it's called, that comes out of the low back that goes down into the leg. And so many times people have sciatic pain, they rub their leg and they, oh, my leg hurts and it's not the leg, it's coming from the back. Well, those same nerves all over the spine control organs. So you may have a pinched nerve going to an organ where the organ is malfunctioning and then you'll say, well, you know, if it, let's say it comes to romance, well, gosh, I must be low in testosterone. Not necessarily. You could have a pinched nerve in the low back affecting the organs. And we did a show about this a couple of weeks ago where if you have hardening of the arteries, the blood vessels that go into the organs, and the sex organs included, are very small. So a little bit of blockage can block the blood supply going into your organs, and that can be an issue as well. And I can't tell you how many patients, I go over their x-rays every single week, and I see hardening of the arteries, and usually in a low back x-ray, we can see it pretty clearly. Young people, old people, fat people, skinny people, doesn't matter. I see it all day, every day, and that is due to bad diet. Almost 100% of the time. I can never say 100% of anything, but you have a bad diet. I see the hardening of the arteries. We can see things called phleboliths, which are calcification of some of the veins in, in the pelvic area. We can see hardening of the abdominal aorta. And that oftentimes, in fact, almost always, is dietary. And it's really cool because most patients listen to what I say. They don't come to my offices if they don't want to make some changes. And they do it, and we can take some follow-up x-rays a few months later, and they'll say, oh, Doc, I can see the improvement. Yeah, you can. It's like when people take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Doc, I see the improvement. A couple of days, I'm feeling my energy. I'm feeling my brain work better. Yeah, it really does work. 
And that's what's cool about this. If you get the nervous system, the digestive system, and your diet straightened out, it, chances are you're going to see some amazing results. Lots more to talk about with testosterone, but let's go back to the callers. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Lee, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, uh, two things real quick. Uh, one thing I've been eating is uh, some potato chips uh, sometimes that are made with uh, uh, avocado oil, uh, coconut oil. How do you feel about these alternate oils? And also, what's the natural food we can eat to boost testosterone? Okay. Uh, first thing about the oils, whenever you heat a carbohydrate that high to fry it, especially potatoes, you create something called acrylamides. Acrylamides are known carcinogens. This, there's no question that acrylamides can lead to cancer. So no matter what kind of oil they're cooked in, you're going to produce these acrylamides. So French fries, potato chips. Now, avocado oil, probably a little better choice than, let's say, peanut oil, which okay, is— Okay, that's good. But it's still not good. It's okay. not as bad. Okay, I don't, want, I don't want to say, well, Dr. Joe said I can eat all the potato chips I want fried in avocado oil. No. And it's still so a carbohydrate. Brown, yeah, go ahead. Brown, brown belt nutrition before black belt, Dr. Joe. That, oh, good boy. You've listened, Lee. Good boy. Yes, we're going to go to brown belt nutrition. That's, I talk about that in my books a lot, my, my brown belt nutrition. Um, so, yeah, anything fried that level is not a good idea because you're definitely producing acrylamides. And it's still a carbohydrate. And in a perfect world, Every meal you eat should have about 15 grams or less of net carbohydrates. When I say net carbohydrates, it's all the carbohydrates in the meal, and then you subtract the, the amount of fiber, the grams of carbohydrates minus the grams of fiber, and that's called your net carbohydrates. And if you can get to 15 grams or less per meal, you'll lose weight, you'll have energy, it should help your testosterone levels. But when you're eating potato chips, regardless of what they're cooked in, you're really skyrocketing. Those right, and carbs so the, and the food, the foods that help get natural testosterone up. What, 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 what are those? We got a lot to talk about with that. There's a lot of things we need to talk about. It's not just uh, a food, but supplements to help the adrenal glands. Of course, we talked about that. Ashwagandha, uh, Eleuthero. These are going to help the adrenals. Now, is that inside of your supplements? Because I'm taking both of your supplements now. Is that included in there? It's not. Those are separate supplements. Okay. 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 But um, okay. they're both. Uh, I take those in addition to my super greens and essential source. How do you like the super greens and essential source, by the well, way? Well, it was funny because when at first I was like, "There's no way I can get this stuff down," and I tried it with some almond milk and I put a banana in it, like you said, and it's easy to get down and actually it tastes okay. So I'm I'm okay now, and that was a good recommendation. Put a banana in there with some almond milk and it goes down easy. Perfect. Yeah. Freeze the banana even makes it more fun. Good. Cool. Yeah, sure. All right, so keep listening. Um, those are the supplements that that's your answer in a nutshell, but there's a lot more to it than that. Okay? Yeah, you'll tell us about some more foods. I uh, appreciate it. Got lots of cover. Thanks, Lee. I appreciate it. And if you have a question, folks, just like Lee, you can call us at 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com. You can send me questions through my website. Uh, we archive our radio shows there, so you can listen to hundreds of hours of radio shows, all no charge. I videotape a lot of my live lectures. Check my schedule. If come out to my live lectures, first of all. If you're in the area, if you're not in the area, just come to the area and come out. They're a lot of fun. And I videotape them and put them on my website as well. So a lot of folks watch my videos because it's, it's we're so used to watching screens. And so just listening, you kind of drift away sometimes. But if you watch it, it's kind of cool too. And there is plans, by the way, someone asked me the other day, there still is plans to turn this show into a TV show. That Those plans are still in the work. So Again, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, once again, drjoesposito.com. And the Super Greens, the essential source, my books, a lot of other stuff. We have an Amazon page as well, so you can go to Amazon and order them as well. So when we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit more about uh, the therapies that you do and uh, some body hacks that you can do to normalize your testosterone. So that's, that's going to be the fun part. So once again, the number here, 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, do me a favor. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Tell your friends about the show. Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for telling your friends because the show is growing like crazy. Our following is just like crazy. And it's a lot of it because of you, because you listen and you tell your friends because we, me and you, want to get you and your friends naturally well. We want to get you well naturally. And so that's why it's, it's good that you're tuning in, tuning in and sharing that. And again, like me on Facebook. Uh, follow me on Facebook. We send out lots of cool information there. Uh, questions, you can send me through my website, uh, Facebook slash Dr. Joe Esposito. You can send them now if you want, and I'll try to answer them for you. But we want to give you all the tools you need to get well and stay well. So we're talking today about uh, testosterone and what it takes to get the testosterone not higher but normal. It's a big difference there because too much of a good thing can be, can be dangerous. 
And so the benefits and the risks of testosterone therapy, there's, there's a couple. Uh, there was uh, seven interconnected federally funded clinical trials involving 790 men over the age of 65 uh, looking for the benefits or the risk of testosterone treatment. In older men with low testosterone levels, short-term one-year treatment was found to boost bone density and strength, especially in the spine, and reduce anemia. As far as cognition goes, your thought process is not much of a change there. On the downside, the one-year of testosterone treatment increased the risk of cardiovascular events in men age 65 or older who had serum levels below 275 nanograms per deciliter. So there's a pro and a con to taking this stuff. And then there's other studies with the exact opposite results. So there isn't a real clear-cut answer yet on taking the testosterone therapies. Whenever we put something from an outside source in our body that the body makes, the body says, oh, I got plenty of that. I don't have to make it anymore. So there could be a downside to taking that where your body slows down its own production of the hormone. So there's real no hard and fast rules on testosterone therapy. Uh, Susan Ellenberg, she's a professor of biostatistics at Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, she co-authored four studies, and she says there are definitely benefits and potential risks. It's not an overwhelming conclusion that every man over 65 should be on this or to stay away from it. My father had the early signs of prostate cancer. Now, it was the early stages, and one of the recommendations they said was, well, let's give him this hormone as chemical to shut down his production of testosterone because they found that testosterone could actually make the pr prostate cancer become more aggressive. They gave him a shot. About four months later, he's dead. And when I looked up the research on this, it turns out that one of the people, some the group of people you should never give this shot to is people with heart conditions. Well, guess what? Somebody didn't read the directions. My father died. Now, did he die from that? I have no proof. But I noticed my father always had a nice build on him, a nice muscular build. And... After he took the shot, the hair fell off his chest, it fell off his arms, his hair fell off his face. He just got weak looking, and then he died. Now, testosterone is good for muscle building, and not just the biceps and the triceps, but also the heart. Now, again, I have no proof that this did this, but according to the research, you should never give it to someone with a heart condition because he didn't have a heart attack. His heart just stopped, and that's one of the side effects of this drug. So I wish the doctors had read the directions better. You know, and, and it, maybe my dad would still be here. I don't know that. But you got to be careful when you're messing with this stuff. So, again, there's no hard and fast rules. Three testosterone trials published last year produced a uh, mixed bag of results. Men over 65 with low testosterone levels experienced modest improvements in libido when using testosterone gel, a treatment that's not, that has no uh, beneficial impact on general uh, vitality or uh, ability to exercise. Now, if you're using a hormone cream, you have to be careful because if you're using it and you put it on your hands and let's say you're putting it on somebody else, you're absorbing those chemicals as well. So if it's an estrogen cream, a testosterone cream, please use gloves because you don't want to get it on your hands and then also never, ever have that access accessible to children because if children come in contact with these hormones, it can be devastating. We don't want to mess with kids' hormones. They've got enough stuff going on with their hormones. Recent analysis did suggest that low testosterone and heart disease might both be caused by poor overall health. Well, there you go. Now we got it. Why do some people have healthier lives? Now, their genetics play a big role. I understand that. But here's the thing with genetics. If I have good genetics, and I think I do, I have a family of long livers. Not that they have long livers, but they live long. <laughs> One of the things I find is that I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have good genetics. If I don't have good genetics, I need to work harder than everybody else to fight, you know, to counteract the fact that I don't have good genetics. So either way, the treatment or the, the, the approach is the same. Make sure you have a normally functioning nervous system. Make sure you have a normally functioning digestive system. Acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. That's there. You need to fix it. And we fix, well, we work on countless amount of patients was after reflux. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine, Johnny, out in California today, and he sent me a copy of an MRI that he had because he was having some abdominal pain, and it looks like his stomach is pushed up against his diaphragm. And he said, uh, so, Joey, how do I fix that? And he says, why don't you just come out here and fix me? And I said, well, it's a little long ride to fly out to California to do it. I said, but find your chiropractor. He goes to, he goes to a very progressive chiropractor in, in L.A., 
And I said, find out who it is, and if he doesn't know how to do it, we can Skype together, and I can teach him the technique, techniques that we use in our office. And he said, great. But if the stomach is pushing up against the diaphragm, you're not digesting your food properly, which means you're not breaking the proteins into amino acids, which means you're not producing the chemicals that your body needs. And if you have a lot of inflammation, a lot of gas and bloating, those are signs of an inflammatory condition. The adrenal glands, remember the adrenal glands? They produce prostaglandins, which moderate inflammation. They'll raise the inflammation or lower the inflammation. So if you're producing a lot of inflammation, you're putting a strain on the adrenal glands, and then the adrenal glands may not be able to produce the proper amounts of pregnenolone, which becomes DHEA, which becomes your sex hormones or your stress hormones too, your cortisol. So if you have neck pain, back pain, of irritable bowel syndrome, constant gas, diarrhea, you're constantly putting this stress on your body to deal with the inflammation. So we can A, just burn out the adrenal glands, or B, get to the cause of the problem. That's what we try to do in our offices. We try to get to the cause of your healthcare problem, not just treat the symptoms. And a pinched nerve in the mid-back, kind of ladies right below the bra strap, that's the nerve supply to the adrenals. Pinched nerve there can affect the function of the adrenals, just like a pinched nerve anywhere can affect the function of, nerve, of organs. And you want to get the chemistry right. So you can fix the chemical stress, we can fix the physical stress, and then we can get you on the right supplements to get the body to heal. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have a healthcare question, give me a call. We got lots more to talk about. Number here is 844-44-DR-JOE, 4 4 drjoe My website, if you want to order Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, send me questions, listen to radio shows and videos, all no, the radios and videos, no charge, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And the supplements, by the way, are also available on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. I'm glad you're here. Hope you're having a great day. We're going to give you lots of good information to help you naturally get well and stay well. And today we're talking about uh, ways to balance out and normalize your testosterone levels because testosterone is not just for romance. Testosterone is necessary for muscles. It's necessary for bone. It's necessary for uh, uh, blood. So testosterone does a lot of things in the body aside from just what your, your obvious thinking is. Oh, it's good for, you know, little, little, little fun and romance there. It's also important to keep you alive. And I'm going to give you a couple of body hacks that you can do to optimize your testosterone levels naturally. So let's give you a couple. It's always fun. I like, that. I like body hacks. I like that cool trend now on the Internet and on TV shows on little hacks you can do. Now, a man's testosterone level is going to decline with age, starts around age 30. But there's a lot of things besides aging that plays a role. Now, think about generations past when men were active and healthy and they did this well into their old age. So clearly it's possible to grow old without losing your oomph. And this is a big thing. I was uh, chatting with my mom the other day, and she was talking about the men in her generation and how they all had good builds. She was very seldom ever seen anybody with pot belly or that was fat. But be, a lot of things. Number one, we didn't sit around as much as we do now. There's a lot more physical labor being done. But also the foods that they were exposed to didn't have a lot of endocrine-disrupting hormones in them. Now, what the heck is an endocrine-disrupting hormone? It's a chemical that when you put in your body, disrupts your hormones. It's pretty simple. And things like commercial animal products. Many times they're fed steroids, hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, genetically modified foods. Genetically modified foods themselves can alter your hormones. And so there's a big, big uh, issue with genetically modified foods, and certain farmers are finding that when they feed their animals genetically modified food, uh, they're not as amorous. They don't make as many babies. And so they take them off the GMO corn. GMO means genetically modified organism, the corn, the soy, and they get back to their normal uh, activities. So if you're eating a lot of corn and a lot of soy, and a lot of you are every day because it's in everything, corn chips, high fructose corn syrup, soybean oil, soy is a filler, a lot of big problems there. So that's why if you're going to do corn or soy, I recommend organic, but try to cut it out the best you can because it can mess with your hormones. But back to my point, that men of just a generation or two ago didn't have a lot of the chemicals that this generation of men and women are being exposed to. So unless you're working with a hormone specialist, it's safe bet. It's a safe bet you simply want to address lifestyle factors that are known to affect your testosterone levels. So we talked about high-intensity exercise and strength training. Those are good things. And little things you can do, like when I'm on break here at the station, I'll just jog in place. You know, I'll go real fast for about 10 or 15, 20, maybe 30 seconds. And that little trick alone is going to help boost my body's function. Now, if I do that eight times in a day, 
eight 30 second segments, I've got my workout in. It's pretty neat stuff. Weight loss, this is a biggie too, because visceral fat, that's fat around the belly, is known to suppress testosterone production. What happens is when I went to school a couple hundred years ago, we were taught that fat really is just this blob. And that's all it is. But now we find out that fat becomes a living, breathing organ. So if you're overweight, your fat is producing estrogen. Estrogen essentially counteracts testosterone, affects your testosterone levels, your balance, I should say. And so fat produces estrogen. Now, estrogen causes you to lay down fat, which causes you to produce estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat. See the cycle? And so if we can reduce our fat, our body fat, it's going to help our hormone levels because now you've got this big organ producing all this excess estrogen. Is it hard to lose weight? Yeah, it can be. But you got to cut out the breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas. That's the thing. Sugar converts into fat through a process. Fat doesn't necessarily convert into fat. Eventually it will if you take too much of it. But if you can start increasing things like avocados, uh, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, make sure it's organic, you're going to see some changes there dramatically. So we want to reduce our body fat because it's producing its own living hormones. Got to cut down that sugar because it spikes insulin and insulin sabotages the production of testosterone. Having good insulin sensitivity is positively correlated with healthy testosterone concentrations. So cutting back to sugar, your body doesn't produce insulin if you don't eat a lot of sugar because it doesn't need to. Insulin goes to the cells and tells the cells to open up and let the sugar in. And then the cells use sugar as fuel. If you're not eating as much sugar, you're not producing as much insulin. You want to increase your zinc and magnesium intake. Zinc is one of the nutrients required for testosterone production. And magnesium has also been shown to improve uh, hormone levels, including testosterone and human growth hormone. That's why you should get the minimum amount of nutrients every single day. And when patients come in my office, I've been doing this for a long time now, I'm fascinated how they're alive. I look at their diets and I said, your body is such an amazing organism that it can take these little steamed hamburgers and French fries and mocha milkshakes, whatever, that don't even have milk in them. There's so many chemicals in there. And how are you, so how are you alive if that's your diet day after day? That's why I recommend everybody take a minimum of Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I made them for you guys. I made them for myself originally, and my staff was kept stealing them from me, and then my patients were stealing them from the staff. And, but Super Greens and Essential Source, two powders. I mix them with coconut milk, almond milk, shake it up, um, drink it, and that's the minimum amount of nutrients. And this way you're getting things like zinc. You're getting things like magnesium. You're getting your calcium and iron and boron and silica and getting the nutrients that your body needs when you eat a good diet and then you supplement with things like super greens and essential source. Relatively inexpensive for what you're getting. It's like the bargain of the year. And they're available on my website, drjoesposito.com. Or you can get them on Amazon as well. But this is going to help give you the nutrients that you need, the raw materials to help normalize your testosterone levels. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have a healthcare question, the lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my office when I'm not uh, on the air. My website, lots of good information there. You can order supplements, send me questions, listen to radio shows, watch videos of my lectures, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. We're talking today about ways to boost your te- or normalize your testosterone levels naturally because there is a risk when it comes to hormone replacement therapy. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying I want you to know that there are risks. And even if you are doing it, I want you to understand that if you can get your body functioning normally, hopefully you won't need that. Patients ask me all the time. They'll say, Dr. Joe, I want to get off my medication. So listen, that's not my job. My job is to get your body healthy enough so you don't need the medication. Should I stop taking the medication when I come see you? No, absolutely not. Let's follow it. Let's co-manage. Let's follow what the other doctors say. Let's co-manage the case together. And let's see if we can get you healthy. And in all the years I've been in practice, I've never known another doctor to say, no, I don't want you to get healthy. All the doctors say, hey, if there's a way to get healthy and get you off this medication, I'm all for it. And so that's why a lot of doctors refer their patients to us because we try to get their patients healthier, hopefully off the medication, but maybe reduce it. Because that's our goal is to naturally get you well and keep you well. We want to get the nervous system, the digestive system, and your diet straightened out. So a couple of things you need to do as well to keep the testosterone levels high. We talked about vitamin D levels earlier. You got to get those vitamin D levels up. Get out in the sun 20 minutes a day 
And if it just means opening up the window and sticking your arm out the window and driving, you know, with, with your window open and your sunroof open, try to get about 20 minutes of sunlight every single day. We talked about reducing stress, and this is a biggie. Because with the stress, your body produces cortisol. And if you're producing cortisol, you can't produce testosterone. Because your adrenal glands produce pregnenolone, which becomes DHEA, and then DHEA either becomes your sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, or it becomes cortisol. So if you're under stress, it's going to adversely affect your body's ability to produce testosterone. Now, we've got a lot more to talk about, but Ahmad has his earphones on, which means he has something to say. Yes. Okay, so we've been taking a lot of questions lately from Facebook. Yes, we have. So today's question is actually from Melissa, and she says, hey, Dr. Joe, is it okay to use baking soda to brush your teeth? And the answer is a resounding yes, because a dentist taught me many years ago. He said, toothpaste with flavorings and gels, all of that is just for show. He says, brushing your teeth is a mechanical mechanical action, not necessarily chemical action. So if you want to use some baking soda, you can. What you can do is even take some uh, peppermint oil, get some really good essential oils, and you can put flavoring in there if you want to, you know, a, a peppermint or spearmint, and put a few drops in there. And another little trick you can do is take it and uh, get some coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil, baking soda, and a little bit of essential oil, and mix it together. Now, if it gets clumpy, that's okay. The baking soda just creates little clumps. You could always put it in a food processor if you wanted to, or a blender, but it's okay. Just dip your toothbrush in it, and then brush your teeth with it. Now, you can also brush your teeth with powdered charcoal, and your teeth turn black, which is kind of cool, but it really is good for whitening the teeth as well. That's another little trick you can do, but just prepare yourself that your sink and everything's going to turn black when you do that, so... But, yeah, the baking soda is fine. Now, if it irritates your gums, cut back a little bit. Maybe, like I said, if you mix the coconut oil baking soda together, that's a little gentler. But you can try just take, take, take your toothbrush, wet it, put it in baking soda, and brush right away. So, yes, Melissa. Yes, there is a Santa Claus. Oh, no. Was that was that was it Melissa? Yeah, it was Melissa, but she wasn't asking me about Santa okay, Claus. Okay, no, okay, yeah. No, there was something a, a long time ago. It, uh, is there a Santa Claus before you were born? Oh, okay. And I can't remember who it was. Is it Melissa? Anyway, I can't remember. Anyway, let's go back to the callers. Uh, Brian, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. How are you today? I'm very happy you called. Good. Thanks. Big fan of yours. Just got a question. My fiance suffers random bouts of um, nausea and or dizziness. Uh Um, Do you know what the root cause of something like that would be? It's not dating you, is it? No, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of of girls get sick when they're around me. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me, I guess. (laughs) Now, um, a couple of things it could be. Uh, When you start feeling nausea, it could be the balance can be off. So a little trick you can do is stand her up. Uh, clo- put her feet, you know, just shoulder width apart, close her eyes, but wrap your arms around her. Don't touch her, but just wrap your arms around her and see if she starts to sway one side or the other. Okay. If she does, it could be either in inner ear or a cerebellum issue. The cerebellum is the part of the brain that can control balance. Okay. So make sure you put your arms around her so in case she starts to sway, you want to catch her. And if that's the case, um, you can bring her into our offices. We can show you how to essentially reboot the cerebellum. Gotcha. And if that's it, then we know what it is. Now, if she she doesn't sway, then we have to start looking at her digestive system. She may have does she have acid reflux or heartburn? Um, hasn't been diagnosed, but I can't rule it out. Okay, she so burp a lot. Um, she does not. Okay, yeah. So it could be the heartburn or the acid reflux, which can affect the vagus nerve, which is why when you get dizzy, you want to throw up. Well, you get seasick, right. right? You rock back and forth. That's affecting the vagus nerve. So. I would check the cerebellum, which you can do there. You know the test now. And then ask her if she has a lot of heartburn or burping, uh, bloating, okay. and then it could be the stomach. And I would start with those two things. That it's probably one of those two. If it's not, then we've got to dig deeper. But let's start there. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Joe. I Thanks, appreciate Brian. it. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening. And if you have a question, like Brian did, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DRJOE. That number rings through to my office when I'm not here at the studio. And uh, just remember that number. It's a good no- good way to get in touch with me. Uh, like me on Facebook, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm pretty close to my friend limit. So if you try to friend me, I- I'm probably not going to accept the friendship. But if you like me on Facebook you- or follow me, you're going to get all the information that anyone who's friends with friends me is going to get too. Um, so that's just an easier way to do it. And uh, the super greens, the essential source, those are nutrients that your body needs. And that helps everything, including your hormone levels, giving your body the, the nutrients that it needs. So other little hacks we can do to keep the body healthy, uh, eat healthy fats. Eat the avocados. Eat the, uh, uh, the extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin coconut oil. That's going to work tremendous. And if you even ate a tablespoon or two of coconut oil every day, that's going to be good for you. A little thing that I do 
is when I take my super greens and essential source, I'll take about a tablespoon of coconut oil. And if it's if it's warm, oh, coconut oil, by the way, gets solid at around, I think it's 76 degrees. So if you buy coconut oil and it's solid, it's liquid and it turns solid, don't lose your mind. That's what coconut oil does. So I can either scoop out a little, I usually use a fork and kind of scoop it out and then drop it into my super greens and essential source. Or if it's warm out in the summer months, I'll just pour about a tablespoon or two, it doesn't have to be exact, in with the super greens and the essential source, shake it up and drink it. This way you're getting those really good essential fats into your body, which can help your testosterone, all your hormone levels. Now, another trick we can do if we're talking about romance is we want to increase our nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide production opens up your blood vessels. And you can take something called beet powder. Red beets, they dry it, take the water out at a very low temperature. Same process we do for Dr. Joe's essential source. And they also take out the sugar because beets are pretty high in sugar too. And what's left is a powder. You can buy it, try to buy it in bulk if you can. Do organic, of course. Um, you can buy it in bulk. I know there's a place uh, not too far from one of my offices, a health food store that carries it. And take about a half a teaspoon and mix that in with these super greens and the essential source as well. And that converts into nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels, which helps with circulation. And we need circulation when it comes to romance, uh, but for just brain function, for daily activity. So that's another little hack you can do with the super greens and the essential source and take it all at once. And what I do, if I, that's the thing I have in the morning. People say, what do you have for breakfast? Super greens, essential source, and sometimes I'll put coconut oil or beet powder in there. And that's my breakfast. Quick, easy, very inexpensive. And the coconut oil helps you feel full. So then you can hold off till about 10, 11 o'clock uh, before your next meal. And if you hold off till lunch, better still. And then you just have a salad for lunch, something light. I usually pack my lunches because I find it's so much less expensive. And I know what I'm getting. And I don't have to think, what am I going to have for lunch today? Oh, let's go to a restaurant. What kind of restaurant? You got to drive there. You got to park. You got to leave a tip. It's a lot cheaper to live a healthy life than it is a sick life. So folks, got to go to a break. If you have a healthcare question, give us a call. Lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com. You can listen to radio shows there, watch videos. A um, lot of great videos there and lectures that I've done on specific topics. Find the ones that interest you. You can order Super Greens and Essential Source. Those are also available on Amazon. A lot of my supplements are on, and books are on Amazon as well. If you have an Amazon account, you just order it there. Hey, got to go to a break. Tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. I am happy that you're here. Hopefully, you're going to learn lots of good information to help you get well and stay well. And we're talking today about how to normalize your testosterone. You, I could say boost it because that, that's good marketing and people tune in. Oh, boost your testosterone. I will learn that. But I want to normalize it. And, and so if that means boosting it, well, so be it then. Uh, we got to change the diet. We got to make sure you're getting the raw materials in your body to make the stuff. Research shows that a diet with less than 40% of its energy or calories as fat uh, led to a decrease in testosterone levels. So you want to be able to up your uh, fat in your diet. Good fats, not bad fats. Uh, extra virgin coconut oil, olive oil, uh, almond oil, uh, avocados, avocado oil. Those are all some good things. So also if you have uh, low libido and low uh, physical romantic function, okay, we'll keep it clean for families here, uh, we have to understand uh, that we want to boost the levels, but not always uh, from an external source. We do it from an internal source. Studies concluded that the act of romance, you got what I'm saying here, is likely what boosts your testosterone level in men and not the other way around. So if you, use, if you, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it, uh, holds true here. So the less activity we have, uh, the lower our testosterone levels can go, and so then we have this cycle. Then our libido drops, and then we don't feel like having activities, and so that becomes an issue. So if you don't use it, you lose it, folks. Kind of a good idea to get out there and use it safely, of course. Please very, be very, very, very careful. There's a lot of cooties and junk running around out there. Uh, one in three uh, active adults in Atlanta, in the Atlanta area, have herpes. So please be careful. Get blood tests. I want you to be very, very cautious out there because I don't want you getting something that you're going to regret. Certain drugs can lower your testosterone levels. Statins, for example, are associated with a number of symptoms commonly attributed with testosterone deficiency, including cognitive loss, that's loss of brain function, thought process, and romantic dysfunction. Statins nullify a lot of the benefits of exercise. So if you're on a statin and you exercise and try to boost your testosterone, you're probably not going to be happy with the results. Steroids and opiate painkillers. Opioid painkillers also lower testosterone. So how many people out there are taking painkillers right now? Raise your hands. A lot of you. I did a show, was it last week or the week before? I can't remember. And we were talking about uh, the death rate 
you know, life expectancy in the United States is dropping. And one of the reasons is that people are taking, one of the reasons are taking opioid drugs. And when you start taking them, your body gets used to them and likes them. And then you can become an addict. So very innocently, you don't think you're going to become an addict. I, I took this one painkiller and it led to one problem and another and another. And now you, suddenly you're an addict. And that too can lower your testosterone levels. That's why we talked last week about we need a new protocol for pain management. If you have pain, instead of just doing drugs, we and all the all the, the the groups, American Medical Association, American Chiropractic Association, are all saying we should try uh, low uh, low risk treatments first. Because what happens is the the lower risk chiropractic, the safer, less aggressive techniques, uh, acupuncture, massage, seem to work really well, and that's why a lot of people when they have pain come into our offices and we do chiropractic treatment on them and they get amazing results in many cases, most cases. And they also see other benefits because the nerves control organs. If you pinch your nerve to your liver, your spleen, your heart, your lungs, your, your testicles, your adrenal glands, your ovaries, those organs aren't going to work properly. And so that's why we want to get the physical part of your health care in line. We want to fix your digestive system because one of the suggestions that has been given is you can take what's called a branch chain amino acids because amino acids become the neurotransmitters and the hormones, I would rather not give you a supplement that has the amino acids broken down already. I would rather fix your digestive system so that it can break it down. So acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. We need to pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm in many cases so that it returns to normal function. Uh, we just had a caller if somebody dropped them off the air. Want to know if, if you're taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, do you give up all your other vitamins? And the answer is, or supplements, the answer is, I don't know, because I don't know what you're taking. What normally happens is patients bring their supplements with them to our offices, and then I can sit down with them and I can say, okay, uh, if you're doing Super Greens and Essential Source, chances are you won't need this, 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 and this. Now, if you're taking other supplements, like let's assume you're taking something for your adrenal glands, Super Greens and Essential Source help. But if you have a bad case, we may need to kind of give you a little boost there. And so the, the answer is I don't know because I need to see what somebody is taking. We put together nutrition protocols all the time for our patients. And in fact, I want it to be part of your treatment plan because if you're, t if you're we're fixing the physical but you're not fixing the chemical, you're not going to get 100% of the results that you want. You may get amazing results and you're thrilled. You had neck pain, back pain, headaches, numbness, tingling, uh, back aches, and we adjusted you, and you feel great, and that's exciting. I want to take it to a whole nother level beyond that if we can. Most people are willing to make some dietary changes and, and do supplements. Some aren't, um, and if they're not, that's okay. But I beg them at least, and I beg you too, at least get the diet straightened out. At least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Most people do very well with it. And just that alone. You'll start to see a change. You say, now I'm feeling better. Okay, what else can I do? Well, you know what? Instead of having a burger today, I'm going to have some greens. I'm going to have some green leafy vegetables, a salad. I'm going to have hummus as opposed to uh, a, a meat. I'm going to have uh, beans in my burrito instead of beef in my burrito. And you make these little tiny changes. And you start increasing your fiber intake and your high dosage of nutrients, those high nutrient foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And then you get the spine lined up and open up the nerve supply and you fix the stomach and you start to wonder, why didn't you do this sooner? Biggest complaint I get from my patients, why didn't I do this sooner? All right, a couple other things we want to talk about. Uh, things that you can add to your diet. Pomegranate juice. One glass of pomegranate juice per day increased testosterone levels between 16 and 30% in one study. It's pretty high dosage. Authentic extra virgin olive oil. Remember, we talked about how to test it. Next time you buy olive oil, if you have it at home, put it in your refrigerator tonight. When you wake up tomorrow morning, it should be cloudy. If it's not cloudy, chances are you got a, a fake olive oil. And there's a big problem in the olive oil industry because olive oil, you know, it's not the cheapest oil out there. And so some companies are being a little uh, sneaky with that. I'm watching Rachel, my screener, and I don't know what she did. She just snapped her wrist and she's making funny faces. I don't know what she's doing over there. See, when you're on radio, you're in a soundproof booth here. I can't. I just see faces out there. I see Maude and Rachel, people walking by. My wrist just popped. Oops. I can't take you anywhere. We're never taking you anywhere nicely. This is why we can't have nice things in this studio, Missy. <laughs> All right, research. Participants who consumed olive oil daily experienced an increase in testosterone levels between 17 and 19% in a three-week period. Zinc-rich foods like cashews and raw pumpkin seeds help increase testosterone. Coconut and coconut oil improve your body's ability to make cholesterol. 
which is necessary for testosterone production. One of the things I see when patients are on statin drugs, and again, I'm not telling you not to take your statin drugs, you need cholesterol. Cholesterol is the precursor to your sex hormones. And so you need cholesterol. So that's why you got to try to find that, that balance there. Folks, if you have a healthcare question, I'm going to open up the phone lines, 844-44-DR-JOE. D-R-J-O-E. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. If you want to order Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, other supplements, listen to videos, watch, watch videos, listen to audios, they're on my website, drjoesposito.com, and the supplements are also on Amazon. Hey, tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. I'm happy that you're here. Hopefully, you're happy that you're here, too. And we're talking today about ways to normalize testosterone. Many times, that means boost it. But we want to make sure that we normalize the testosterone and not just mess with uh, Mother Nature. So I'm going to give you a few more helpful hints you can do. Cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli and cauliflower, will help men's body secrete excess estrogen, thereby increasing the availability of testosterone. So what happens is cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, useless fact, if you, if you haven't heard me say this before, the reason they're called cruciferous vegetables is because when the flower forms, it's in the shape of a crucifix. That's what I call cruciferous. But these cruciferous vegetables have a chemical that are called diendolmethane, D-I-M. And diendolmethane helps prevent testosterone from converting into estrogen. And so it helps keep the balance of testosterone there. So gentlemen and ladies, cruciferous vegetables are going to be great. Now, they're also great for helping you lose weight. And here's a little trick that I do very often. A bag of Brussels sprouts. Sometimes you can get them for $1, or $2 a bag. I'll take the Brussels sprouts, and if they're small ones, I don't do this. If they're bigger, I'll boil them first and slice them in half. Then I'll put some olive oil and some balsamic vinegar on it and a little uh, salt, uh, a little garlic if you want to get really fancy, and put them in a broiler and broil them and kind of brown them a little bit. And you can eat them hot or cold, and they're delicious, really inexpensive and very filling. Because one of the things that happens is when we eat foods that don't have a lot of fiber in them, it doesn't make us feel full, and fiber does. So things like ground up flax seeds, ground up chia seeds, these are really good to help you feel full. And a lot of folks will do that. They'll mix the Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, you know, maybe a tablespoon or two of ground. You got to grind them fresh, get a coffee grinder and grind them up. Flax seeds and or chia seeds, mix that in, and it really just helps fill you up. But the cruciferous vegetables really filling, and when you put oil on them, that oil makes you feel full as well because oil helps send messages to the brain to make you feel full. And that helps keep your testosterone levels high. So it's a fun little trick. And uh, try it. It's really inexpensive and you, it feels great. Now, garlic. Garlic doesn't contain any necessary nutrients to produce testosterone, but it, can it contains something called allicin, which is a compound that helps lower cortisol. Now, if you listened earlier, I said that your adrenal glands produce pregnenolone, which, produce, which becomes DHEA. And DHEA, if you're under stress, becomes cortisol. If you're not under stress, it becomes testosterone and other sex hormones. So garlic can help lower your cortisol levels, leaving the DHEA the availability to become testosterone. So you more effectively and efficiently use your testosterone that's being produced. Another strategy you can use to enhance your testosterone is intermittent fasting. Now, somebody just called up and we dropped the call. It helps boost your testosterone by improving uh, other hormones like insulin, leptin, uh, adeno, adeno uh, ne I'll skip that one, <laughs> and other hormones because they make your body work. I'm going to give it a shot here. Adiponectin. How about that one? We'll say that's right. Okay. It, it, it helps balance out your other hormones. And so what you do with intermittent fasting is you... Stop eating for more than eight hours. So when you eat something, anything that, that you eat, what's going to happen is your body takes about eight hours to burn through that food. And then you eat another meal, and then it burns for about eight hours. So your body is always digesting food. So what you need to do is stop and give your body a break. So what I do, what my little trick for intermittent fasting, I do it about twice a week, is I'll have a lunch. And then I don't plan it usually, but you can plan it if you want. But my life is so crazy that I'll just say, okay, no plans tonight, not going anywhere. I don't have to have dinner. I'm just going to skip dinner. And I get out of the house because if I'm in the house, I get hungry. I'm going to get hungry anyway. And then the food's there. You're gonna go, eh, maybe tonight won't be the intermittent fasting night. Maybe I'll do it another night. But get out of the house, go shopping, go for a walk, get some exercise. And it's really neat because you wake up the next day, you sleep so much better, you feel refreshed. And I find when I skip that meal, I'll usually drop about quarter pound to a half a pound. 
So it's not really a, a weight loss technique, it's a health technique. But that will also help, also help boost your testosterone. And I think everybody should do some intermittent fasting about once or twice a week minimum. If you can do it every night, that's even better. The less food you eat to a point, the healthier you're going to be. And that's why I recommend Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, especially on the days that you're fasting, because you want to make sure you're getting enough nutrients. But most people, with the food they eat, they're not giving their body nutrition anyway. So by not by skipping a meal, you're not missing a lot of nutrients. In fact, you're probably helping your body by not putting a bunch of junk in there. Some supplements you might want to consider, saw palmetto. Now, this addresses not only the symptoms of low testosterone, but it can actually increase your testosterone by inhibiting what's called the upconversion of dihydroxytestosterone. And dihydroxytestosterone is one of the reasons that we go bald. Testosterone becomes dihydroxytestosterone. When choosing saw palmetto supplement, make sure it's organic. Uh, that's critical because it should be dark green in color. Uh, saw palmetto is fat soluble, so it works real well if you take it with something fatty like nuts, uh, coconut oil, avocados, things like that. It, it absorbs a lot better. Uh, astaxanthin, if you haven't heard of astaxanthin, it's a new, uh, new buzzword supplement. It's actually, I always get the cool stuff before you guys hear about it. And if you mix that with saw palmetto, it even helps more. 2009 study found that optimal dose of saw palmetto and astaxanthin decreased estrogen while simultaneously increasing testosterone. So those are other supplements you can get. But again, whenever you take a supplement, you want to make sure it's the best. My German grandfather, he came over from Germany, I think it was 1923, and some advice he gave me was always use the best or always buy the best, he said. It's always cheaper. And when it comes to supplements, absolutely positively resounding, yes, that is true. Because whenever, and whenever I read a study that says a supplement doesn't work for a certain issue, whatever it is, 100% of the time, up to this point, this is what I found, 100% of the time they were using synthetic versions of the natural supplement. It's not the same thing. Ascorbic acid, even though it's called vitamin C, is not vitamin C. It's a fraction of the vitamin C molecule. And you need everything working together, the synergistic effect, to get the best benefits. So get the adrenal glands working as well. We'll talk a little bit about supplements there. Uh, ashwagandha is another, it's a good one for adrenals. Uh, Eleuthero is a good one for your adrenals. I don't eat animal products, um, but if you eat animal products, you can actually take a glandular, which is dried up, what they call desiccated or dried animal glands, and they put that in a pill form, and that works very well. I, as weird as it sounds, and I'm not a supporter of that, but a lot of people, if you're going to eat animal products anyway, I'll recommend doing a glandular because the glandulars are actually feeding glands. So if you need adrenal health, you take adrenal desiccated adrenal. If you need brain health, take desiccated brain, desiccated heart if you have a heart issue. So it really is kind of cool uh, that there's a lot of supplements out there that can help the body get well. This is not saying you shouldn't take your medication. This is saying I want to help get you well. And you get well by having a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. That's what we've based our practices on for 30 plus years. And the success rate has been extremely high. Folks, got to go. Hey, thanks for listening. Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com. You can order Dr. Joe Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source there, my books, other supplements. Send me questions. Watch videos of my lectures. Listen to audios. If you have questions, send them me through the website. If you want to order supplements and books, they're also available on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, it may be a little easier for you to order there. And I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day. As I always say, tell your friends about the show. We'll talk to you soon.